Tracy Walders with us now, former CIA officer and FBI special agent, also News Nation national security analyst. It was already dangerous, and he was a threat to the community. Now that he is armed with a 22 caliber rifle, law enforcement say their tactics are the same, but you have to believe that they are on another level alert with his current threat. Well, thank you for having me, Marnie. I actually said this exact thing on Sunday um, on News Nation that my biggest concern was him obtaining some kind of, of gun um, from you know any of the houses that he had been going into because as he grows more and more desperate, um, he becomes more and more desperate for self-preservation and fending people off. And we have to remember, you know, 22 rifle that can go 140 yards, and he has a scope with it, so he can hit people from far and he can hit people rather accurately. And that should be very concerning, I'm certain, um, from law enforcement. Their tactics won't change because he has always been considered armed and dangerous. Um, however, the issue of getting close to him, I'm sure, is, is top of mind for a lot of law enforcement in the area. Right. And talking to this homeowner who had this scary encounter with him, walks into the garage, and there he is, and they have a shootout. I want to play for folks at home a portion of the press conference where police are describing this encounter. A call was received from a resident on Coventryville Road indicating a short Hispanic male, no shirt and wearing dark pants, had entered his garage while the homeowner was in it and that he grabbed a 22 rifle that was leaning in the corner of the garage. The homeowner drew a pistol and fired at Cavalcante as he fled with the rifle. I think the good news here is the homeowner wasn't hurt, but you look at his his crimes committed and this brutal stabbing of his ex-girlfriend that put him behind bars in the first place. I mean, he is ca un he is capable of, of the unthinkable. How does that change law enforcement's approach as he tries to make his way and hide in a community? Well, I think, too, we also have to remember that a family of five was actually killed by an escaped convict about a year ago um, in the southern part right. of Texas because they had gotten into the home um, and taken a weapon. And so this is extremely concerning. I'm, I'm very much I'm a bit more concerned about the risks to the public, um, quite frankly, uh, than to law enforcement, because it's incredibly brazen to walk into a garage with a person in the garage and take a gun when there's clearly guns in the home and the person in the garage could be armed himself. I don't think that he really has any regard um, for life at all. And I would imagine that law enforcement is pursuing him probably in full tactical gear um, and, and trying to utilize perimeters as much as they can. But this is a pretty wide area that they have um, right now, eight square miles. And it's getting more complicated. I mean, the, the further you expand that perimeter, right, the bigger the area you're searching. And he's already shown he's capable of stealing a vehicle. I mean, you have to operate under the impression that he could be outside of that perimeter. I think you should always operate under the impression that he is outside of the perimeter. I think sometimes, you know, we get into this idea that a perimeter is a wall. It's sort of this like foolproof wall. It's not. It's it's a it's a figurative wall. And he is going in and out of that perimeter at any time. Also making this difficult, and I know Evan mentioned this before, him being five feet tall, he's probably well under any of the foliage coverage. That makes searching a lot more difficult by air. And in, in situations like this, typically law enforcement likes to utilize drones in air searches because it just covers a wider area quicker. Infrared is going to be difficult because it doesn't do well um, with wood. It disperses heat differently. So I think that's going to be incredibly problematic also, this area is known for having drainage ditches um, that he may be using. He may be utilizing a, this kind of tunnel system, which is also going to make searching by air incredibly difficult. So is this where the canines come in? I mean, are they their best chance on the ground to sniff him out? You know, I think canines here are going to be um, incredibly useful. But again, there's only so many canines in this large perimeter to cover, and that is going to take a lot of time. And the problem is, is, you know, he's heading more and more west. At least that seems to be um, his his path. And that is going to take a long, long time to cover that, that square mile of area on foot. That's why we utilize air more. It's just more efficient. So yes, canines are probably the best bet here. However, I think it's, it's a cumbersome and time-consuming search. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.